Hello, I'm Dr. Sarah Ballou, instructor in medicine at Harvard Medical School and GI psychologist in the Division of Gastroenterology at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. On behalf of my co-authors, I'm pleased to present the findings of our manuscript titled Effects of Irritable Bowel Syndrome on Daily Activities Vary Among Subtypes, based on results from the IBS in America survey. It's well documented that irritable bowel syndrome is associated with significant disease burden, especially in terms of emotional and financial costs. For example, patients with IBS have been reported to have worse health-related quality of life than patients with diabetes or end-stage renal disease, and it's estimated that they miss an average of 13 days of work or school per year compared to five days for those without IBS. However, only a small number of studies have evaluated the impact of IBS on other aspects of daily living, such as social interactions, relationships, and activities outside the home. And those studies have not distinguished between IBS subtypes. The aim of the current study was to conduct a retrospective analysis of a large nationwide survey to evaluate impairment of daily activities by IBS subtypes. We analyzed data from the IBS in America survey conducted for the American Gastroenterological Association in September and October of 2015. The objective of the survey was to explore the attitudes and experiences of IBS sufferers. To be considered eligible, respondents had to meet criteria for Rome 3 constipation predominant IBS or diarrhea predominant IBS. Respondents were excluded if they had mixed bowel habits or if they reported having been diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, or any cancer of the gastrointestinal tract. In total, 3,254 people with IBS completed the survey. The majority was female and Caucasian, and the mean age was 47 years old. More than half the sample considered their symptoms to be at least very bothersome. There was no difference in the degree of bothersomeness of IBS symptoms between subtypes. Of the respondents who reported being currently employed or currently in school, 36% reported that IBS symptoms impacted their productivity at work or school at least 10 days out of the month, and 38% of the sample reported missing between 1 and 5 days of work or school in a typical month. Again, there were no differences between subtypes. When asked how often their IBS symptoms interfered with personal activities, for example, parties, sporting events, family activities, 34% of both subtypes reported that symptoms interfered at least 10 days per month. There were significant differences between IBS subtypes when asked about the impact of symptoms on specific activities of daily life. Respondents with IBS-C were more likely than IBS-D to report avoiding sex, feeling self-conscious about body image, having difficulty concentrating, and feeling not like themselves as a result of their symptoms. Respondents with IBS-D reported more avoidance of places without bathrooms, difficulty making plans, avoiding leaving the house, and traveling less than respondents with IBS-C. These subtype differences remain significant in separate, multivariable logistic regressions predicting reported difficulty in each area and controlling for employment status, age, sex, and symptom bothersomeness. In response to the hypothetical question, what, if anything, would you give up for one month to experience one month of relief from your gastrointestinal symptoms? Over half the sample reported that they would be willing to give up alcohol or caffeine. 40% would give up sex for one month, while 25% would give up their cell phone and 22% the internet. IBSD participants were generally more willing to give up daily conveniences than IBSC, although the only significant differences between subtypes was in IBSD's willingness to give up caffeine. In summary, results of this large survey-based study suggest that although perceived bothersomeness of IBS symptoms and reported rates of absenteeism and presenteeism are similar between subtypes, individuals with IBS-C and IBS-D report differences in specific areas of functioning. IBS-D was associated with more impairment in activities outside the home, while IBS-C was associated with more interpersonal impairment. 
Understanding these differences is particularly important when considering the development of future cognitive and behavioral interventions for IBS, with specific attention to tailoring interventions by subtype and individual patient needs.